yeah so i believe that um, when i left uh, playing for other composers in around 86 87 my thing was if i didn't have any work i would practice i thought practicing or uh, learning about music was my investment i didn't care about opportunities i felt like if you are good enough people will come to you and you have to raise the standard you have to prove that you are a passionate and if you just stand there being passionate and do your job great Every, everybody comes to you you don't have to go behind people and uh, that's my belief even now and i never it is a jinx when i go behind people i i just wait <laughs> i do my stuff put it out there if, oh i love this stuff i want to work with you yeah thank you come <laughs> so i never knew that i was born for music <laughs> my mother made the choice the uh, said in many interviews and she felt that i will be in music she had kind of predicted that i will be in music and um so the day i realized that music could be my passion music could be my future everything was when i um when i went to my studio panchatan record for the first time it was built i didn't have any equipment i couldn't afford anything at all it was just a shell it was just ac and it smelled very new it had soundproof and uh, so i just went there and i was kind of one day i will have equipments all over the place but now i can't afford it so that's probably the the day i still remember going in and just sitting there and looking at it i would say technology is an enabler to express because uh we have a computer it can't write by itself i mean now there software but the software is written by people to write by itself <laughs> so we should find a way where we master it and we forget all the buttons and what do you think should be what comes out of it so this is the process of what i have been working on so if i buy something new if i'm learning a new software i would never use it in the beginning i would keep it in a room and i'll be working on it when i'm free and it might take a couple of years one year six months two weeks but when when my mind is not searching for buttons is not um uh, but the 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 communication or the uh, connection between me and my brain and 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 the software disappears I mean, it becomes like almost telepathic you know then i start using it so sometimes it's frustrating but i've been doing that for <laughs> everywhere whether it's india abroad we all have the same problems same passion but culturally we're different and artistically speaking we have uh, more people out there who think free we are bound by traditions which is good and sometimes it's bad because it forces you to yeah forces you to puts you in a box and uh, now things are opening up there now because there's so many platforms for expression you know if you take youtube or whether the singer there's no nobody's blocking them out there's no you know unbreakable fort which is protecting oh you can't sing and nobody anybody who can sing or not sing can be you know express their thing so i find that uh, india is changing because it's the youngest country in the world and i can see that whole movement happening like and that's the only difference otherwise in color we are different <laughs> but in attitude i think we are more hard, hard working and in a way that's bad too because we don't take off we don't take off on saturday sundays we say oh i can work on saturday sunday <laughs> but what happens to your brain it, it becomes fatigued and then we don't get that fresh inspiration it's taking off is very very important taking a holiday is very very important though i don't take <laughs> collaboration is also trust um is about trust because so for me um, starting in a studio where i was literally doing everything like playing uh, at times when the sound engineer is not there i was recording i was uh, producing i was recording the vocals i would set up the mics like all in one you know because i wanted that privacy i wanted that space and slowly uh, if i had given it if it if i give it to someone i would never be happy i'll come back and redo that stuff slowly in 15 years what happened was uh, because i was traveling i needed to trust i needed to develop i needed to nurture talent uh, or the people whom i work with 
and make them do things better than me. So I would be like, okay, they would definitely do it better than me. They got more energy. I'm tired. I'm jet lagged. So that happened, and then the school started, the college, music college started. Now we have hundreds of uh, students coming out who are great in different different aspects. So one one student is great in harmonizing, one is great in recording vocals, one is great in you know electronic model lessons. So it's it's fantastic to see that whole. And imagine being a leader, and then you use all this stuff in the right way. And you have the same energy as before, but much more, you know, in a larger, like a corporation, like a... Mm -hmm. So this is the whole change which happened. And then that developed into music for movies, which is pretty much the same in, in India. You know, they come, and I'm not complaining, it's, it works very well, <laughs> and it's an industry. They come and show two romantic songs there, one sad song, one club song, and one climax song, sir. <laughs> okay, <laughs> 25 years and then I've been hearing this again and again. So that led me to like, what else can we do? So then you look at uh, Broadway, you look at uh, European art, you look at... And then you see like, they could be like this, but I don't know whether this movie will run if you do like this. Because this formula works and no producer will produce. So look, why no producer? Why can't you produce yourself? Wonderful. And then it, it's probably a six year process where I was developing things and trying out things with, at home with video and, and music and doing all this research. Then finally have this movie called 99 Songs, which is directed by Vishwesh Krishnamurti. He's a musician himself and he's done um, work for MTV and Viveris and I really loved his work. So we actually think alike now. I mean, if I say about a character, he comes up with an idea which is better than that. So it's like a competition, in, in a good way for the... So that happened, and then it took four years already. <laughs> and um, then virtual reality came there, those funny camera there. <laughs> that came in and blew my mind. I said, this is very, very fascinating. And nobody was interested in it because there are no theaters to make money. <laughs> so it's a work of passion. And, um, we shot this last year in Rome. And... Uh, very soon you'll you'll find it, you, you know, you could see it. And this is probably a movie idea, narration is based on 360 Immersive. And it's got smell for the first time, I think. Not for the first time, but at least we're trying for the first time. Stereo smoke kick, like two perfume machines. And then, and that's the narrative. And then we have uh, a chair called the Positron chair, which takes you it, it makes you feel like you are, you know, in the in the scene. And there's a car moving, you're really moving with it. Oh. And when you put this, you really feel that you're moving. Are you going up or down? And there are other haptic uh, devices all in one. There's an experience which we're trying to make it very unique.